So there's a new issue, a relatively new issue, that has now become one of my most important issues. So you guys know um, what I generally push on the show. I'm a giant advocate of Medicare for All, giant advocate of free college and a living wage, and ending the wars, and ending the drug war, and a new New Deal, and, uh, you know, paid vacation time by law. Like, there's a lot of stuff that makes up the policy platform that I believe in. But there's one thing that honestly jumped the line on for so many reasons. And you're going to see why that is. And I hope that this issue catches on with other people as well. Because I think it is colossally important. So, there's a reason why we have a constitution, okay? A constitution is to lay out your rights and to say, hey, listen, these are the things that are off the table. So we're not going to, you know, willy-nilly with a 51% vote throw out the ability of gay people to have rights and be able to marry, you know? And... I think it's important that we make a distinction between the things that are kind of off the table and that are your rights and are not open to what's sometimes called the tyranny of the majority. And those issues definitely exist. And we need to be clear about that. Now, at the same time, outside of constitutional rights, which again are off the table, rightfully so, what we do is we basically outsource our decision-making to corrupt assholes who took a lot of money from corporate America and from billionaires and have their own biases and sometimes lie and all that stuff. Now, I get it that, listen, that's the way the system works right now and we're not going to fucking totally overthrow it and uh, in, in a sense, we're, we're stuck to an extent, to an extent. I mean, we can reform it uh, obviously, but the question is how far can the reform go and what's acceptable and what's within the parameters and yada, yada, yada. But listen, my new pet issue, which I now care deeply about, and it's up there in my top five or ten issues, is that I want a national direct ballot initiative bill. I want the Democrats to propose it. I want them to push it endlessly. I want them to argue for it. And I think, number one, I think we could actually win on this issue, and it's possible to get it implemented, as long as you get, you know, Democratic majorities, uh, hopefully a Democratic supermajority, and you really care about this. Um, and the whole idea is, every two years, the American people in every state, we go to the polls, and we vote on the top five issues that now, of course, there's going to be some sort of ballot process to determine what those issues are. There has to be a way of determining which ones make the cut, which ones don't make the cut. Now, I'm not an expert on this. There are states that have direct ballot initiatives. Many states have direct ballot initiatives. You have to talk to some of the experts who set up those systems, okay? But at the national level, we should have a bill and propose it, fight for it, push it. The bill can become law. Every two years, we vote on five important issues directly. So, listen, we've gone through the issues before. 80% of the American people want to raise the minimum wage. We're stuck at $7.25 an hour, and we've been since the fucking Bush administration. Only 17% of the American people wanted to be in Afghanistan still, and that was as of 2013. Now the number's probably even lower, but nobody even pulls it anymore. We're still in Afghanistan. 70% uh, of Americans want Medicare for all, including 52% of Republicans. And we don't have it, and we don't even have a public option. I can give you... Dozens of issues where the people want X and we don't have X and we're not even close to having X. Now, why do I think that this is a giant piece of the puzzle and an answer to many of these problems? The evidence. So in other words, listen, at my core, I'm an empiricist. You want me to believe something? Show me it. Pretty simple. Well, what's happening right now? We just had a midterm election and this has happened in the past, like, four or five elections that I've seen, it's like 80% of the time or more that when we have direct ballot initiatives in the respective states, the left-wing position wins. That's what happens 
when you directly to the people. You had states, guys, where Republicans won in terms of the actual Republican politicians, but the left-wing ballot initiatives won. Now, the old school strategists will look at that and say, Huh, that makes no sense. I have no explanation for that whatsoever. Well, I do, bitch. You know what my explanation is? The left-wing policy ideas are incredibly popular, but corporate Democrats are not. <laughs> so remove the face of the corporate Democrat, remove the corruption, remove the pro-establishment platitudes and cliches bullshit, and what do you have left? A very clear-cut, dry, simple explanation of a left-wing idea, and when you present that to people, most of the time, in fact, the overwhelming majority of the time, it wins. Medicaid expansion won in three out of four states. And that, and in the one state it lost, it was because of $17 million worth of lobbying against it. And it's because as part of the same provision, they put raised taxes on tobacco. So the tobacco companies went full bore against it. And it's still barely lost. And that's one example. We expanded uh, voting rights in Florida. Somehow, the Democrats, the politicians lost in Florida, but they expanded voting rights for former felons. So the left-wing policy idea won, but the Democratic politicians didn't win. Minimum wage. The minimum wage increase almost always passes when it's on the direct ballot initiative. Now, imagine for a second you divorce it from the individual states, and you go directly to the people at the federal level with five issues every two years. Do you have any idea how much further left this country would be? Do you have any idea how much would be a thriving social democracy? And listen, for people on the right who don't like my idea, all I have to say to you is this. What happened to the marketplace of ideas? What happened to the battle of ideas? I thought you are really convinced that in the battle of ideas, your ideas win. Your ideas beat the shitty ideas on the left. Okay, let's have that battle. Leave it up to the people. Five issues every two years. Leave it up to the people. And then, hey man, listen, if your idea is let's get rid of the minimum wage, let's, let's argue it out and see who wins. Your idea is let's keep the wars going, let's argue and see who wins. Your idea is, is uh, you know, people should be locked up for drugs, let's, let's debate it and see who wins. And again, we can go down the list. Wall Street regulation, you want to put that on the ballot? Let's see who wins. Let's have the argument, let's see who wins. So if, here's the point. If you are a principled right-winger, you know what they'd say, right? Well, sure, I may be down in the polling on some of these issues, but I think that I can convince people when I make my argument. And to be fair, those people exist. You know, I have no doubt in my mind that Ron Paul would say to me, no, seriously, I'm going to convince everybody that my position is correct, and now let me make the argument, and yes, I'll put it up to a direct ballot initiative. Actually, I don't know if he'll say I'd put it up to a direct ballot initiative, but I do know he would say, I think I can convince people. So, okay, if you're on the right and you want to convince people, fine. Let's have that argument and then put it up to the people in the actual marketplace of ideas, and let's have direct ballot initiatives. Five issues every two years, and listen, that would make this country a thriving social democracy. That's what I think. So that's why this is now... So, like, the reason why corruption is probably the most important issue is because it's the one issue that impacts all other issues. You understand that? The one issue that impacts all other issues. Because when you have ExxonMobil pouring money into our political system, hey, look at that, we drag our feet on the issue of... Uh, climate change. When you have big pharma pouring money into our uh, political system, hey, look at that. We drag our feet on lowering drug prices. And the list goes on and on. Oh, we have endless war. Oh, look at that. Raytheon and Boeing can't stop giving millions of dollars to politicians. So corruption affects all other issues. So we need to address that directly and get clean elections. For sure. But there's another way around it. The way around it is put it up directly to the people. Now, again, it's not a magic bullet because there are going to be times where the propagandists win and they'll pour a shitload of money on the wrong side of the ballot initiative. And hey, man, right now, that's par for the course and we'll deal with it, okay? We'll fight to get the money out of the system and all that stuff. But even with the giant bias of big money, like 80% of the time, the direct ballot initiatives on the proper side are winning. Let's all get on this page. Let's fight for it. Let's push for it. Guys, this is a big idea that really can make our country a lot better. I think we should all get on board and we should push it endlessly. And it should honestly be right up there in the conversation with Medicare for all and a living wage in terms of how much we prioritize it.